Thank you for setting me up with the question of asking where do our clothes come from? Hello everybody, my name is Ahmed Ali. I am from Somalia. My father was the first person in his lineage to leave the countryside and go to the city. Why? Because the temperature was changing and it was getting a lot more challenging being a nomad. My father was a literal nomad, a person who went from place to place with livestock. That's what he still loves to do in the wintertime. He disappears and he returns back in April because he knows the weather out here in the wintertime isn't too much fun. And so he enjoys the sunshine and um, being in the freedom. My father said something to me, though, when he went back to Somalia when I was uh, 16. He said, I'm sorry, Ahmed, you've never struggled or starved before, but we're out of here. And I looked at him like, why did you take me out of Somalia if you want me to starve and struggle? Right? He's like, ah, one day you're going to understand, Ahmed. And honestly, I didn't know because my father was like a philosopher. What he would do, he would always implant ideas in my mind, but he would never hatch them. He'd say, yeah, later on, go find out about it later on. <laughs> Lo and behold, many years later, I know exactly what my father was talking about. He wasn't trying to get me to starve physically. He wasn't trying to get me to become uh, somebody who's challenged in order how to pay rent. What my father was saying was I didn't understand the details of how things are made. The unfortunate part is back in the days, my father would explain, he said, if you wanted to hunt, you'd have to think about what you wanted to hunt. You'd have to prepare for the hunt. Then you'd have to go chase the hunt. You catch the hunt. You debone the hunt. You get the, uh, the hunt ready. Then afterwards, you take the leather, you cure it, and then you eat. Now you walk to McDonald's, it's done. It's two seconds, it's over. We don't even know where our food comes from anymore. We don't worry about that. We've gotten too comfortable as human beings. This picture that you see up there, that's my daughter, Layla. Why is Layla here? I'm selfish, I'll be honest with you. The reason why I care about the environment, the reason why we in my family recycle, the reason why we make sure we don't use too much water is because I want her to enjoy as much of a good life as I did. And it's selfish. I know I'm not thinking about you guys, but that's okay. The earth is still gonna be good if we work around it together. My question to you is how many people here have ever left Alberta? Raise your hand. Amazing. Question, how many people here have ever knocked on wood? How many people know where it comes from? Raise your hand if you know where it comes from. Damn, y'all are educated. <laughs> I'm proud of y'all. A lot of people don't. They don't know where it comes from. They do things. They don't have an understanding of where they come from. They just follow them. Perspective is shaped by our experiences. Where we travel, who we are around, who we are surrounded by, what we are doing shapes how we view the world. My father telling me that I didn't struggle, struggle enough, my father having me to experience life on my own and making me take my own journey made me realize that I need to understand and appreciate where my food comes from and how much food I consume and how much waste that I make. And it was my father's doing. I don't buy that many clothes. You see these clothes and I look fine? My wife. 100% my wife. I honestly do not care about clothes, materials, and it's weird. Somebody will say, what's your favorite food? I'm like, food? I eat, it's food. They're like, no, but what's your favorite food? I'm like, I, I don't have a favorite. It's weird and I can't answer it because it makes me realize that my father put more emphasis on the challenges and also the service of getting the food rather than the food itself. We need to redefine how we look at climate change because right now it doesn't matter to us. It's not personal enough to us. Have you ever bought a car, shoes, clothes, but as soon as you bought it, you saw it everywhere, but before that, you never saw it anywhere? That's knowledge that's become pertinent to you. And until climate change becomes something that's relevant to us, if it becomes something like my father who had to leave the countryside and struggle as a street rat and eat garbage from a garbage can just to survive, then we won't understand the challenges of that. The unfortunate part is not many people even know that a lot of the water that we drink is water that we went to the bathroom in that just got filtered around. We don't know these things. I'll ask you a quick, this is a poem is called Questions, because I love asking questions and I think it's important. So this is the question, because uh, what would you do if I said I'm gonna kill this cat right now? <laughs> no, for real though, what, what do you feel when I say I'm gonna kill this cat? You're like, oh, you're crazy. Why would you hurt that poor cute little thing? Until the environment becomes something like that's serious to us, like I'm not going to waste that, that's going to kill the planet, we're not going to care about it. Honestly, and I'm, and I'm serious about it. And I'm telling you as somebody who constantly has to struggle and strive, I love perspective. That's something that I constantly work towards myself. One thing that I need to tell you is you think you are in control of your thoughts and your actions, you're not. I'm sorry, you're not. Our surroundings dictate who we are. 
Our environment, meaning who you are, dictate what we become. I want you to try this, because it changed my mind. It blew my mind when I saw it. I want you to go like this really quickly. I want you to take this and put it underneath your chin really quick. I said your chin. <laughs> right? I said your chin. Until we start living climate change, I'm talking about wake up in the morning, I pick up my toothbrush, I put my stuff on, I grab a little water and I sprinkle it on my toothbrush and then I brush my teeth, it's not gonna make a difference. We have to actually live it. You see this right here? This is Sudan. I went to Sudan in 2016. The funny thing is my father and I left Somalia because of war. I went back to Sudan because they invited me to teach poetry, which was super weird. While I was there, I ran into these into these pyramids. Did you guys know that Sudan has more pyramids than Egypt does? Did you guys know that Sudan is originally where Moses was dropped off? The White Nile and the Blue Nile meet together and end up in Egypt. What we know of as pyramids is Egypt, but in reality, they started out here. So knowledge always has a source, and what I'm asking you to do is to go find the details of where your food comes from, where your clothes come from, who's making your clothes, and until you are connected to these things, it will never make sense to you. So, have you ever felt lost in a room full of maps or been in a cubicle with a passport in hand that's naked as stamps? I have, and it gives me the cramps. Or have you ever been to a library which is supposed to be this database of knowledge, but instead it's only used for quotes for university or college, crazy logic, or how we consider those whose dollars don't make sense psychotic, sort of like we think slavery has been abolished when in actuality it's been revamped reshaped and polished because we went from masters to master cards, but don't be alarmed. Just as long as you don't sell it and you feed your spirit freedom, your soul will never starve. But isn't it alarming how we traded money for essential skills like hunting and farming as if paper and lead is going to keep us fed in a crisis when we're starving? Now, I'm not saying all of them, but the government is corrupted, the aliens are amongst us, and our minds have been abducted, and this is their laboratory. We've always been test subjects, and they're not beaming us up. They're keeping us down because these squares know the right angles just to keep us around. And that's why I'm not defined by a border or a region. The lack of order from the government's only one of the many reasons I'd never pledge allegiance. The government changing face like the way they be changing seasons. They're seedless. Funny they got branches but no roots. So how can this be treason? Sad that we believe in a bunch of rulers. If we try to measure up, we never come out even. Now they say you could try to switch to metric, but they say you can defeat me. Our life is just a game in a system they create. It makes it absolutely easy to play us nine to five, the minimum wage us. And those of us who are courageous, they cage us and jail us, God save us. Man, I hope the system doesn't swallow me. But if I resist, they'll get a special agent to follow me when really I'm no bad guy. But because I love to use my noodle, they consider me nutty like Pad Thai. Plus, nine to five is the only way to make it. Some say there's no one way. I'd rather be a rapper and a poet, even if it meant I stayed underground like a subway, because then I'd still be on track training for my final destination. Being yourself is the only way to prepare for that final presentation. This is the reason why I do it. And if you don't feel guilty for taking care of this planet because of my daughter, oh, <laughs> do it for the future. As an indigenous elder said it best, we do not inherit anything or even this land. We borrow it from our grandchildren. It's not ours. At the time we're living, it's not ours. We are preparing something for our children. I'll leave you with this. We are nothing more than matter made of earth and time. And in a matter of time, this body of ours will go back to earth and won't matter. Because in a world where legacy is the only thing you can leave behind, it's when you enter your grave or when the last memory you face that you truthfully die. After all, there's a reason why God shaped this earth like a honeycomb, is so that we may never forget to just be mindful of what you're doing. Thank you very much.